Driving in a bright out comedy On a hippie trail Head full of zombie I met a strange lady She made me nervous She took me in and gave me breakfast And she said Do you come from the land down under? What I want to buy is some celery all right, you got the tomatoes? Mm -hmm, yeah, I got them. How many you want? Get two for a dollar. Oh, good. Uh, two for a dollar. I'll take four tomatoes. Uh, I'm going to uh, try to take one onion. One onion? You got two for a dollar. All right, I'll take two. How much is all that? Four dollars. Four dollars. That's not very expensive, is it? No, not that expensive. You can have that's fine. Uh, thank you. All right, guys. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. Y'all come back now. I will now. Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, y'all have a good time. All right, mate. See ya. And she said, Do you come from the land down under? Women go and wonder. Can't you hear? Can't you hear? Well, I thought it'd be nice to find somewhere off the freeway amongst nature. Got a beautiful spot here in Arkansas and juice up my Thanksgiving lunch which has no turkey in it, by the way. I think in a funny way, I'm thankful that I got sick. Because if I didn't get sick, that was kind of my body telling me to slow down and to get well. Uh, who knows, if I hadn't got sick, I may not have ever slowed down and I might have already had a heart attack and died, so. You will never know, but I'm thankful for that. G'day, my name's Joe Cross, and I'm an Australian, in case you couldn't work that out from the accent. Now, I've just arrived in the United States, and I'm not going to eat any of your food. I've come here to fast for 60 days. All I'm going to do is drink juice, green juice, 60 days, 60 nights. Why am I doing this? Well, let me show you. Take a good, hard look at my gut. How many pizzas, burgers, fries and cokes do you reckon I inhaled to create that masterpiece? I'm certainly no picture of health. I look like I've swallowed a sheep. Not only am I overweight, I'm also sick. For the past nine years, I've been taking pills night and day just to get by. But as of today, I'm saying enough is enough. I know what you're thinking. Can't you just eat the fruit and vegetables? Why juice? Well, have a look at just how many vegetables it takes to make one juice. 
I don't care how hungry I am. I don't think I could eat this four times a day. So by juicing, I'm supercharging my nutrient intake. You know, that's, that's a lot, isn't it? I've tried this before, but never for this long. In the past, I've always gone back to my old ways. This time, once I'm done, I'm determined to adopt a healthy lifestyle. But first, I have to get through the next 60 days. So I have a plan. For the next 30, I'm gonna hang in and around New York. And after that, I'm gonna drive across the country. Well, what I'm doing is I'm doing a documentary on health. About what? Health. Health? You know, what we eat. Oh. I'm actually going across America, a bit of a tour around the States. Uh -huh. so I've got a thing called chronic urticaria, which is like a chronic rash. You got a wild? Well, it's, it's an illness, you know, like a disease. I put myself there by having a lot of junk food, eating a lot of crap, not eating vegetables, not eating fruits. But I believe what we put into our body is very important as to how healthy we're going to be. Well, I'm, I'm on a juice fast. You ever heard of fasting? Pasuna. Oh. Water Woo! and vegetable juice, 60 days of juice, and about six to eight months of eating just vegetables, fruits, nuts, and beans. That's crazy. I don't think I'd survive. <laughs> I reckon you would. Yeah, that's unbelievable. Yeah, I know. Tell me about it. You want to know what else is unbelievable? It's just how many doctors I went to when I first got sick. In fact, I went to six of them. I had skin biopsies and tests to see if I reacted to certain things. I took a bunch of different pills. I even spent 14 days in hospital. When none of that worked, I started exploring alternative paths. Massage, acupuncture, Chinese herbalists, mud baths, cell and hair analysis, even witch doctors. The list was endless. Hey! And then I thought, hang on. When I scraped my knee as a kid, I didn't have to do anything as long as I got out of the way. It just got better. If the body can heal itself on the outside, why can't it heal itself on the inside? So what have I been doing wrong? Well, for starters, I had my priorities out of whack. I've been focusing on my wealth rather than my health. Look where that got me. And this is only the beginning. Now I'm on a mission to cure myself, which means no more pills. Well, it's the morning of day one. Time to visit Dr. Joel Furman, a leading expert in nutrition. You don't have a common condition but it's related to an autoimmune phenomenon. I've seen patients with this condition do pretty well and get even get rid of it. All right, Joe, come on over and step on the scale over here. All right, the moment of truth. Check it out. Here we go. Dr. Furman agreed to supervise my fast, as long as I got a blood test every 10 days. Permanent results only comes from permanent changes in lifestyle and diet style. You don't get permanently well unless you permanently change the way you live. Okay, let's see where your waist is. Here we go. The tape's long enough. The fasting period itself can be used as a time where you're going to retrain your taste buds. So if it's a, something that really helps motivate you to stay with healthy eating thereafter, then it's done its job. Hello. G'day, Mum. Hi, Joe. It's a morning of day two. Oh, dear. Only day two. I've been very concerned about you doing this. I mean, it's just beyond me to think anybody can do this for 60 days. The first few days are the toughest. Not eating, it's kind of like you're cutting yourself off from society. When you're not eating food, it's just it just doesn't seem normal. I couldn't even watch TV because of all the commercials. You just don't want to be around people and you don't want to be around food. I was happiest in bed. I didn't want to get out of bed. I just wanted to lie there and feel sorry for myself. So day three was today. I had a pretty bad night last night. I felt very, very, very much alone um, last night in the sense that uh, 
kind of like you've got this mammoth sort of task ahead of you and without food you're sort of really starting to hurt and you're feeling it. It's almost like you want to go to sleep and just wake up in two months and it's all done. As the saying go, you, you do the crime, you do the time. And uh, there's no question I've done the crime. I mean, you know, I really have, uh, I really have uh, not been kind to my body. You know, it's, uh, well, it's a tough thing, the uh, emotional attachment to food. It's, it's bloody tough. These are the pills I have to take. Um, this is a five milligram tablet of prednisone. That's 15 milligrams there. Before I started on the fast, that's how many I was having a day. Looking at these, um, at these uh, bottles here, it doesn't look good, does it? I mean, you, know, you shouldn't be, if you're a fit, healthy, young person, you shouldn't be traveling around with prescription drugs and, and doing that. I mean, it's, you just wouldn't have thought I would never have thought that it'd be me that I would uh, have to do this. Yeah, I was in uh, California in 1999. I went out and played golf and I thought maybe, you know, maybe I've touched some poison ivy. And then that night I went to bed, I went to wake up the next morning and it was kind of like up the forearms and shins and very itchy and I was scratching a lot. It's, 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 like, it's like hives, it's chronic hives. And um, it spread all over my body and torso, and geez, I was like lit up like a Christmas tree. This is how my autoimmune disease works. When you get bit by a mosquito, receptors under your skin send a signal to your brain. HQ, we got an invader in sector three. Scramble the histamines. Roger that, histamines are being deployed. Histamine makes the blood vessels around the bite swell, making it more difficult for the poisons in the mosquito saliva to spread through the body. As a side effect, the whole area is swollen, red and itchy. But with my disease, the receptors send the wrong messages. A handshake is like getting bit by a thousand mosquitoes. Mayday, mayday! All hell's breaking loose down here! All histamine, report to battle station! This can happen at any time to any part of my body. Just a smell. Just a smell sensation. Normally I'd eat two of those. Not two slices, two old pieces. I better get out of here. So I've been coming to the US off and on for the last 35 years. I even lived here when I was a kid. It's like a second home to me. I reckon Americans are super friendly. Maybe that's because I'm not from around here. I also love American food. And if I'm gonna really change the way I live my life, I'm the sort of bloke that likes to tackle my demons head on. So. I couldn't think of a better place to be food free than here in the US, the home of the hamburger. Have you ever heard of fasting? Yeah. Have you ever fasted? Uh, only when I ain't got no money to eat, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only time I fast. I think I sent off for just like uh, 10 bucks or something, how to lose 12 pounds in four days. <laughs> it consisted of uh, first day you eat nothing but something like nine francs. You drink all the liquid or diet soda, but nine hot dogs. You have Second nine day, hot dogs? Yeah, well, the first day. I would never be able to do that. I would never fast. Why not? I don't have because. enough self-control. Yeah. And you? It would just, I don't like not eating. It doesn't <laughs> seem healthy to me. Second day, you had uh, like a, a fruit, apple, uh, pear, but you had uh, nine apples. I went four years one time eating only on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Third day, you had eggs, like a boiled egg. You, you could have 10, nine boiled eggs. I don't fast, I eat. I eat fast, but you know, I don't fast. <laughs> you eat fast. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> then the fourth day, you could have a mixture of all three of those. Okay. You know, uh, and, and, and uh, that was the four day diet. Did you lose any weight? Yeah, I lost about 12 pounds on that. I have no interest in it. I have no right. interest in it. Every time I hear that someone's doing it, they're like sick at the end, they're grumpy, they hate their kids, they hate their husband. 
they hate that you know it's just like they're pissed off and then they reach some high and then they lose eight pounds and then they gain it all back in three weeks yeah right Oh, y'all from Australia? I am from Australia. Yeah, I tell you. you know, well, you, you, uh, you've been there? You got the Russell Crowe thing happening. Have I? Well, yeah. the, the accent? Yeah, the accent of Russell Crowe. Yeah, I'm not as good an actor as him. I hear you. Right from the beginning, he loved his food. He'd have a bottle, but when it was finished, he'd drink it so quickly, and then he would just throw it the other side of the room and demand another one. He was known for somebody who loved Coca-Cola. Like his father. He, yeah. Love it. <laughs> when I got out of high school, I was in good shape. I skipped college, went straight to work. I got a job with a brokerage firm and wound up on the trading floor of the Sydney Futures Exchange. After five years, I went into business for myself. And at age 23, I was making a truckload of money day trading futures and shares. Lots of cash meant fast cars, big boats, big nights out, and in my case, food. Lots of food. And boy, didn't I give it a nudge. In the years I've known him, his weight fluctuated. Big time. Went up and down like a bride's nighty. Cold, depression, headache, hangover, varicose vein, menstrual stress. I would like you to make me your favourite juice. My favourite juice? Yeah. yeah, you can yeah. The cleansing cocktail? Cleansing cocktail. Right, that sounds good. Carrot, apricot, and ginger. Sounds good. Step right over here, he's going to fix it for you. Beautiful. Thank, Thank you very much. No so, juice fasting, you're still eating something. You're drinking nutrients, particularly a lot of micronutrients that are coming from fruits and vegetables. And because it's a liquid, it's more rapidly absorbed. So, it's a quick, easy way of giving your body a very potent source you of healthy nutrients. Now try to think about the way we normally consider juice in our country, which is in a bottle, in a grocery store. Whether it says it has sugar added to it or not, it has been so processed that it's not at all like the fruit and vegetable juice coming out of a juicer that you're making at home. How about a small apple juice, please? Thank you. Like, it doesn't seem logical not to eat food. I mean, where did three meals a day come from? I mean, who decided we eat three meals a day? Why isn't it six or seven or two? I don't understand that. Spinach and beans. It's going to be a big part of my future. I actually love spinach. When you are eating three meals a day and you're 41, that sort of equates to 41,000 meals. Now, we go on holidays, we sleep at night, we give our car a service, but we don't think about giving our bodies a rest. Part of being on this journey is uh, I've sort of resigned myself that I'm not going to eat. So um, once you do that, surprising how uh, how easy it is. Like, like there's nothing going to break me here. I'm not going to I'm not going to like have a panic attack and run out and buy a donut. <laughs> I need to digest to get through my day here it is here look I mean it's 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 sitting here so I've got to think about it that you know the falafels I had say two months ago they're still sitting there and I got to think mentally that I'm actually having them now so the idea of fasting is not unique in fact fasting is part of who we are as a human being 
You see, for millions of years, we basically lived by the philosophy of hunter-gatherer. But to survive when there wasn't anything to hunt or gather, we became like human refrigerators, capable of storing food and carrying it with us for lean times. So early man had a tremendous amount of activity just to survive. In our current modern world, we don't necessarily have to expend much energy. And the reality is that many people don't. We have very sedentary jobs. We're not chasing animals. We're not running away from animals. We are riding to work, sitting at our desk, and sitting in front of the TV, yet we're consuming far, far more calories, particularly from processed, refined foods, convenience foods. Actually, 61% of the American diet today is processed foods. We're talking about oils, sugar, flour predominantly. And the processing, which usually involves cooking and heating, also damages the food. In other words, processed foods don't even have probably one-tenth the original nutrients that were in the food in the native state. Day 31 today, halfway. And uh, time for change of scenery. really ain't too bad. It's not bad, is it? No, no. Yeah. So what do you think? I'll, I'll have one with you. That's OK. What do you think? Yeah. No, you don't like it? it tastes like uh, grass. Tastes like grass? <laughs> really? Well, hey, if it tastes like grass, like a lot of people would drink it. <laughs> What do you think? Not bad at all. What if I told you that I've only been juicing? In other words, I've been drinking this only for 39 days. What would you say to that? I'd say you're crazy as hell. Yeah? <laughs> and is there any secret you'd like to tell young people about what's the secret to living a long and happy life? Yeah, just to be good and kind and be of life to everybody. That's the answer? Mm -hmm. and what about eating the right food? certainly has a lot to do with it. If you don't want to be constipated, eat the right food. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? The closer a food is to its natural state, the healthier it is. So it's like, why are fruits and vegetables good for me? Micronutrients are essentially your vitamins and minerals. Where do we get these micronutrients? They are predominantly found in plant foods. All plant foods are beneficial and essential for human health everything from building muscle to immune function, you know, preventing a cold, staying healthy. I found out that food can be divided into two camps, micronutrient and macronutrient. Micronutrient foods are vegetables, fruits, nuts, seeds, and beans. Macronutrient food is everything else. So what sort of food do you eat? Uh, I eat almost anything. Pizza, chicken. Potatoes. You have KFC on one corner. You guys are looking for a hot dog stand? Yeah. <laughs> and then on that side of the street, there's a Burger King. Do you like Burger King? A lot. It's like, it's five past, ten past eleven in the morning. <laughs> Why are we looking for a hot dog stand? Is this our breakfast or is this our, like, snack between breakfast? snack between breakfast and lunch. Yeah. I'm a meat potato guy. Yeah. Uh, my portions, I don't, I don't eat the rest, you know. Uh, if I do have uh, vegetables or fruit, it's uh, in moderation. I eat no fruits and I eat no vegetables. What was in there? Pepsi. Okay, what else do you eat? 
Um, Mexican. That's all? Only Mexican and Pepsi, nothing else? Uh, <laughs> I drink Coke. Yeah. Do you eat a lot of fruit and vegetables? Um, no. If I told you that eating fruits and vegetables really would keep you healthy, would that change your outlook on them? Probably not. Okay, and why is that? Because <laughs> I'm 16. And, and your, your diet, how's that? I eat a lot. What do you eat? Pie, cake, hamburgers. And how many pounds are you now? Well, 370, 380. That's pretty big. I know. Doesn't the doctor say you got to watch what you eat when you're... And, but you don't bother with that, you just eat anyway. I can't, I don't have any willpower. Yeah. Right. I'm weak. Whose fault do you reckon it is that you're, you're 330 pounds? Me. I don't blame nobody else but me. But nobody controls what I eat. Nobody tell me what to eat. It's my fault. Okay. I, I, them folks they put no gun on me make me eat that food. In terms of that poor diet, whose fault was that? Oh, me. 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 It's my fault, for, but look, I'm hooked on it. Yeah. Once you start eating all this uh, fast food stuff, you, you, you begin to like it, man. I'm, I'm just being honest. You begin to like it. Yeah. you must much rather go get your quick combo now, wouldn't you? Has your life been mostly vegetables and fruits, or have you also eaten fast food? KFC, McDonald's, Wendy's. Right. Chuck E. Cheese. Chuck E. Cheese. Now, tell me, now, how are you, how's your health overall? Do you feel healthy? No, I feel like I need to lose some weight. How, how much weight do you want to lose? About at least 50 pounds. OK. And how do you just put that 50 pounds on? By doing what? Oh, just sitting around eating. <laughs> I, I love doing that. You watch TV when you eat? Yes. Is that when you watch TV, do you feel like eating food as well? Yeah. You get to a, to a point where you really want to eat what they cook, and then when you <laughs> eat it, eat it, eat it, it's like you binge and don't eat it. Yeah. For most Americans, they desire more calories than they require and they gain weight. But they're forced to overeat. It makes them into a food addict and they don't feel well if they don't constantly put food in their mouth. When you fill up your stomach with unprocessed plant foods, it takes up a lot of volume, it satiates you. Your body gets full of nutrients and it stops you from craving excess calories. The modern world's eating both too much processed foods and too many animal products. We're suffering because we're not eating enough natural produce. Your typical American plate is half meat, a quarter overcooked vegetable or some kind of a white potato, and the other quarter is gonna be another white refined carbohydrate. Morning. Cowboy Cafe. What are you eating there, mate? What I'm are you having got? a chicken fry with uh, mashed potatoes. Corn. Chicken fried what? Chicken fried steak. Right, and, and mashed, mashed potatoes. potatoes. Corn and Texas toast. Yeah. What are you eating? Liver and onions. See, you've gone with a chicken salad, have you? Uh-huh. That looks good, actually. It's not too bad. And you eat salad a lot? Fair amount. And how do you feel overall generally with your health? Well, I feel fine, but I've had heart surgery, so... And did that change the way you ate back then? No, not at all. And why is that your reckon? It really doesn't change the way I eat today. Really? I'm here for a few good years. <laughs> I'm gonna eat what I want, and if I die at 55, great. If I live to be 65, great. I ate foods that were fruits and vegetables and nuts and beans and that sort of stuff, if he made that 90% of your diet, and say two meals a week, you could have the meat, you could have a burger, you could have pizza, whatever, just two meals, you could do that. And that would significantly prolong your life. Would I do it? Yeah. Probably not. <laughs> well, I like, that's good, that's honest, that's good. I'm just, oh, I appreciate it. Oh, what about you, Ken? What do you think about that? It bothers me because it does affect, I know for a fact that it affects my life expectancy yeah. and my health. But it's just hard to um, be so controlling of it. So let me ask you a question. Sure. Say this works. Yeah. Say it adds five years to your life. Maybe ten. Yeah. What are you going to do with it? Yeah, have you got a kids? Six. Okay. I kind of think that seeing your children grow up and being able to pass on your knowledge, just just be around for them and their, as a support, 
Well, I actually have type 2 diabetes. Right. What was your reaction when you were told? If there was any kind of denial. It wasn't so much that I had diabetes. The denial has been that I have to do something about it. That's, that's what I deny. That... I actually haven't had food for six weeks. But I feel better as a person and, you know, in terms of satisfied than if I'd just eaten that meal right now. Well, you, you seem energetic. And oh, yeah, no, I feel, I feel great. You've this done is, the juices yes, for yes. 40, 42 days. 42 days, and so you don't look worse for the wear, I guess. Oh, no, you want to see a photo of me at the beginning? Sure. There's a good one of me. Actually, that looks a lot like me. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> you guys, I don't know if you've seen me lately in the buff, but... That's about what I look like. Huh? Can, you, can you see that it's me? Yeah. You sure don't look as happy, I'll tell you that. Here's what I believe. I'm not a doctor, but I reckon that you can get your body back into shape so that you can cure yourself. And you'd be able to hang around in a noise seat a bit longer in life, too. Well, so. I know I'd feel a lot better if I weighed that amount. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Nice to meet you. It's amazing that just the, the sitting in the car now, like with my jeans tight, you know, un, not having to undo the button to sit down. I mean, it's just little things. I could even feel the pelvis hip bone, like here. It was like, I haven't felt that for 10 years. It's like a whole new reintroduction. I've got to reintroduce myself to my body. That's kind of momentum that, that, that kicks you on and, and makes you feel. Because you makes you feel good about what you're doing. What do you think you need to do to live longer in, in life? Probably change my diet. Oh, you think so? Yeah, I know so. Okay, and so <laughs> when do you think you need to change your diet? I don't know. One day I wake up and it's like time to diet. Right now, the doctor said if I don't lose my weight, I'll probably have a heart attack and die. Right. And when did but he say? By when? About what? five years. That's why I'm trying to stay alive because I got grandkids. Do you mind me asking how old you are? I'm 42. How old are you, don't mind me asking? I am 39. What do you think your life expectancy is if you continue going down the way you're going? What do you, what do you give yourself? I give myself 55, maybe. I guess some guessing like 50, 55. I say about the early 40s. Early 40s. So what, how does that make you feel? Made me feel bad because I know I need to eat right. I know I need to. Uh, I don't know, but I hope God got ribs in heaven. Right now, how old would I want to live to? Um, let's see. Probably about 90. 90? Yeah. So what do you think you've got to do to live to 90? Try not to get killed. How you doing, mate? You know, you know about fasting? Well, it's I look not... like I know a lot about fasting. <laughs> no, yeah. but you look... <laughs> You look like you know a lot about eating, though. I know a lot about eating, but I don't know a lot about fasting. So do you keep a gun under there just in case? Absolutely. Can I have a look at it? Is that all right for coming and have a look? Well, it's loaded and the hammer's back. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Got you, got you, got you. So if I wanted to carry a concealed weapon on me now, what gun would you recommend I buy if I'm not real good on guns? Geez, you'd recommend that? That's like a girl's gun. <laughs> that looks like a girl's gun. Is that real? Well, if you're not good on them, you won't do much damage with that, will you? <laughs> that's not real, is it? Yeah, that's a real 22. Right, so if I break into your house tonight to steal the TV set... You and... won't be filming tomorrow. No, no. What do you think's the biggest threat to national security of the United States of America? Borders. Border control, you Border reckon? control, right. Now, what if there was something that was right now in this country that was killing 70 million people? There's things in this country that are killing 70 million. Yeah, that's what I'm asking you. Cigarettes, probably. Yeah. We both quit smoking. Okay, so what about, like, uh, fast food? Yeah, we're fast food people. Yeah? Yeah. What sort of fast food do you like? Well, since we retired, I don't think we've cooked dinner at home more than two or three times in a, a month. So you would cook dinner at home twice a month? Maybe. The rest of the time, we eat out. How many pounds are you now in total? About 320. But, you know, my brother's a doctor. Right. I've watched him struggle with being a vegetarian his whole life and now dying of that cancer. And I think it's a choice people make. I decided that if I'm going, I'm going happy. 
I'm a happy, you know. Yeah. I'm a happy fat guy. I think I'll play Santa Claus in the upcoming auction that we're yeah, having. Yeah, right. My philosophy, if, if it's your time, the good Lord's going to take you, whether you're fat, thin, or whatever. Yeah, right. been following Dr. Furman's orders and getting regular blood tests. Time to check in and get the results of the last one. Your cholesterol dropped from 204 to 135. Your LDL cholesterol went from 132 to 86. I right, so they're all That's good. Very good. They're all good numbers? Yeah, very good numbers. Electrolytes were all good? Yeah, everything was perfectly normal. Everything was absolutely perfect. The point here is we have an unprecedented opportunity in history to be healthier and live longer than ever before. And we simply don't have to be demented when we get older. We don't have to have a heart attack. We don't have to get strokes, and we can dramatically reduce the risk of cancer. The one thing I find remarkable about people is they say, I couldn't do that, without even giving it a try. And I just don't understand that. Hey, you know, if you try to do a 10-day juice fast and only get to day seven, well, good on you for trying. Not, not, oh, you're a failure. Good on you for trying. If you do give it a go, be warned. Your mates will probably think you're crazy. I spoke to him. He was struggling a couple of weeks ago. He was, uh, yeah. He was thinking about breaking then, I think. 60 days is ex seriously extreme. Just drinking juice. Extreme? Yes. But let's not forget. I've had a debilitating disease for the last nine years where I've had to take prednisone, a powerful steroid with a bunch of side effects. I'm 41, I'm fat and I'm sick. You don't need to be Einstein to figure out what's next. Even though I met a bunch of people who felt they were heading in the same direction I was, I also met lots of people who thought they weren't. How would a more conventional 10-day juice fast affect them? Siyong from Iowa volunteered to find out. Unlike me, she was married, and she had to cook dinner for her family. When I met her in New York, she explained to me that she suffered from migraines, and she was interested to see if this could help. I don't know which way it goes. Yeah. I think this thing is so fun. <laughs> I get migraine headaches if I smell certain things or if I eat certain things. And I mean literally a migraine headache that can make me sick, can't see, can't hear, throwing up, the whole bit. Down the hatch, guys. Oh, God, that's nasty. <laughs> She's a bit of a coffee drinker, so she'll, uh, she'll know where she is right now. She'll be having the withdrawals, and that'll be tough. Hi, Joe. Hey, Sion, how are you? I'm fine. How are you doing? I'm going very well, thank you very much. How are you feeling? Um, today, I'm very tired. I feel like I'm in a fog. Um, I just, I'm OK. Trust me, it's going to get better. You want fried potatoes or baked potatoes? I don't care. Fries are good. Now, when this starts smelling good, you, I may have to leave the room. It's growing on me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got something funny to tell you. The first day I drank this juice, within about 30 minutes, I was in the bathroom. And I mean, I was totally cleaned out, so I thought, well, then, when I had the first glass again yesterday, I was in the bathroom again for a, a quite a period of time, and I was like, whoa, where did all this come from? Oh, my gosh. I'm starving, or so I think I am. Who said this was going to be fun? My daughter. She lied to me. She was sadly mistaken, something like that. Anyway, 
I've meditated, I've stretched, I've chanted, I've prayed, and I still want to slap somebody. Nancy's been my friend for 20 years or longer, it seems like. Nancy is a very health conscious person. She works out, she eats right. So she's gonna be my champion. You wanna go down that way? You know what? We could even eat this, this is so good. <laughs> I'm starving. Hamburger helper, oh yeah. Oh, coffee. Move, girl. You can't have any of that either. Ooh, that smells good. The coffee's been the hardest part. We could have one bean. Of trying Ooh. to give up. You want to smell it? <laughs> Come here. And oh every time God. I pass Ooh. Starbucks or every time I pass the coffee pot, it's like I'd start to reach for it. Ooh, there's donuts and eclairs. Get out of there. I'm leaving. Mornings are the best. Evenings. You know, last night when the crew went out to dinner and they all went to Mexican. It's one of my favorites. You got no respect for me, of course. Going out and having Mexican and I'm at home with a kale juice. He'd say things are going well, Mum. And uh, he'd say it's difficult sometimes when the crew were in the restaurants eating and he'd be sitting in the car. And I'd feel for him. And then I'd get off the phone and then I'd go to eat something and I'd find that very difficult <laughs> because I'd think, oh my God, he's sitting in that car having some juice and I'm just about to get into a beautiful meal. I'm a juice. One thing I'm just totally stunned by is just how much energy I have by just drinking juice. Now I know I can't do this forever, so I'm hoping that this fast will be enough to reboot my system. And believe it or not, I'm actually looking forward to eating more fruits and vegetables. How are you mate? My name's Joe. Hey. Bill Staples. How much driving do you have to do? Oh, what? How many miles a year would you do? Oh, anywhere close to 150,000. 150,000. I'm actually uh, just doing my own little research. I'm trying to get myself well. I've, I've got a medical condition which I'm trying to cure. And I'm just big because of steroids and driving. For what? What's the issue? Uh, uh, it's called uticarious vasculitis. Yeah, uticarious. That's what I've got. And uh, your immune system's overactive? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same here. Well, well, that's it's... extraordinary, mate, because you're about one of the only first people <laughs> in the world I've ever met has got the same thing that I've got. <laughs> so what's yeah. the worst thing about it for you? What do you find? Oh, the swelling, the blisters, and the pain. Right. Is it hard to find good food on the road? Oh, yeah. It's mostly it's either fried, uh, in these places like pizza, hamburgers, yeah. pre-made hamburgers. Fasting, I found fasting works for me, so maybe it'll work for you. And I, I'm, I'm betting my life on it, and I really am betting my life, that uh, this is the way to go. Right. Well, let's walk over here and I'll, we'll go and get a juice. What I've got is I've got my battery hooked up and I've got my juicer. Right? And out it comes over here on the other side, right? So yeah. come on, you're going to go. You've got to push it down, right? So that's not too hard, is it? That ain't too hard. And you, 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 you've probably got power in the truck, have you? Oh yeah, I can put that power at the trailer. Now this stuff will save your life. It does, doesn't it? Wow, that's pretty good. Not bad, is it? It's better than the juice you've been buying in the bottle. Yeah. Cheers. Good health. Yeah. Mm. I would suggest that you eat micronutrient food for two months. Then you can do your first fast. And if you want, I'll give you my details. You can call me, I'll talk you through it, help you through it. Now, if you're not down to 210, 220 pounds, I'll eat my hat. <laughs> it's unbelievable. I can spend eight years with this illness where I've met maybe one or two, but not exactly the same. And I'm in a bloody truck stop in Winslow, Arizona, and I run into someone. Similar age to me too. He's had it four years. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I tell you what, the 
Of all the foods I think that there is that you can put in front of somebody, hot bread that's fresh baked that smells so wonderful is probably the hardest thing to turn down. It, it was for me because I was about ready to give up. Yep. Yeah. Do you need anything else right now? No. And uh, All right. Enjoy. All right. the ribs? I'm not a meat eater, but let me tell you, those barbecued ribs were really, really looking good. They smelled good. This ain't good compared to that. <laughs> this is a big challenge. This is uh, a challenge that I did not expect to be so tough. I did not realize how weak I am where food is concerned. G'day, Sion, how are you? I'm fine, Joe. How are you doing? Uh, I'm feeling pretty good. You're looking We're great. In, uh... Oh, thank you. We're in, uh... You look pretty good too, by the way. I want to hear all about it. How are you feeling? Give me, give me the rundown. I'm feeling really good. Energy levels mostly up, less fatigue than even when I'm not fasting. I'm not having any headaches whatsoever. So it's really been a wonderful experience. That's great. I can, I can e even tell on the webcam that your face is looking a lot clearer and cleaner. And I think things are just kind of clearing up all over from head to toe. She just seemed like everything was out of control for her. And since she's been on this fast, why things are starting to take shape in her life where she has some control over weight and her attitude and her sleep, and these type of things. She was totally totally in despair, really, to tell you the truth, about, about her body and her sleep and her physical. Her spiritual life was good, but her physical life was deteriorating. So it's, it's, that's good news for me and her. I feel so much different now from when I started. Being healthy, no headaches. That's the best part. It's incredible. I'm not going for skinny, I'm just going for healthy. No regrets, none whatsoever. I'd do it again. In fact, I probably will. So here I am on the morning of day 61. I thought what better way to break my fast than 2,000 feet above the earth on a beautiful morning. Up in that balloon, I renewed my commitment to eat nothing but micronutrient food until I was free of my medication. And then the real test. Would I be able to achieve and maintain a life with balance? 60 days. Here you guys. So the great news is, back in Australia, eight weeks since I've been in that balloon, guess what? No medication. That's right. I've been one whole week on absolutely no prednisone. It's the best feeling ever. It's just sensational. The changes I've made are not only helping my body, they're also making a big difference to my mind. I invest my own money in growing businesses, both in the US and here in Australia. And we found the right guy. We're confident that this yeah. guy is the right guy for us. Hello, this is Sean Hudson speaking. My name is Joe. How are you, mate? So what have we got here? So this is one of the dresses from the collection Spring Summer. What I know is never looked so good before. And actually, I find that in board meetings now, he thinks so clearly. It's actually quite interesting. 
Yeah, I wonder if it's because the food, the intake, the it's, it's cleaner, so therefore his thought processes are cleaner. There's definitely a difference. So there I am, back in Australia, working on the new Joe, the healthier Joe, the happier Joe. I was on top of the world. And then... You've reached the US cell phone of Joe Cross. Unfortunately, I'm in Australia right now. Please leave a message and I will get back to you. Thanks for calling. Joe, this is Phil. Is it too late to ask for help? I'm getting tired of looking at myself from here. Together and figure something out. I hope it's not too late. I just got a really disturbing phone call and uh, it was Phil Staples, that truck driver I met in uh, Winslow, Arizona that has the same awful disease condition that I have. You offer your help and I might be accepted. Uh, give me a call. Thanks, Joe. Bye. I offered him help and um, I've got to do that. I've got to get over there and, and see what I can do. Last few years, I mean, I've taken so many pills. It's just amazing. I'm so tired of it. It's just not right. I mean, no energy to even walk. I'm always in pain because of the weight on my knees and my legs. In fact, I don't feel like walking when I know I should. So we just got into Sioux Falls, not far from Sheldon. Here to see Phil. After we talked on the phone, he decided to try a 10-day juice fast. Yeah, I really think Phil can do the 10 days. He seems very committed. I've spoken to him on the phone a couple of times. He's at the beginning of his journey. Now, yeah, you've got to admire the bloke, though. He's, he's taking some time off work. That's not easy. You know, he hasn't got a lot of, lot of means, financially, that is. He's putting his health first. <laughs> you reckon? You see a difference? Yeah. <laughs> see a lot big difference. <laughs> now I want to get there. I oh, mate, you'll get here. Mm -hmm. And this is a mate. True Australian uh, former bought your present. Yeah, thanks. Now this is a um see that's the Australian these are our colours, right? Green and gold are our sporting colours of yeah. our country, right? So we've got Australia there, our flag, and then have a look what what, what, what do you see on the front there? <laughs> the hey? Yeah. Now, there you go, mate. All right, this is the beginning. Now have a look at the size on it. 2XL. All right, now what are you normally into? 5XL, 6XL, six this okay. is a 6. All right, so what's this going to be? A challenge. <laughs> the target. That's right. This is life or death for you right now, in my view. Mm -hmm. I mean, this really is. This really I mean, is. You, you didn't know me when I was sick, but, mate, I'm looking in a mirror here. This is how I was. I wasn't as big as you, but I was on my way. Isn't it scary when your parents or your relatives or your loved ones start talking to you? And they're asking you whether you want to be buried or cremated because you're big enough to, that it's going to be tough to bury you. It's going to be expensive to bury you. So they ask about cremation. For healthy people, doing a 10-day juice fast is fine. But when you're on prescription medication, you need to be supervised by a doctor. We brought Phil in for a full checkup, just to make sure there was nothing else seriously wrong. What will you be able to tell from that? If his heart is structurally sound, if he's had any disease or problems with being overweight. So far, everything was looking good. More tests to go, blood to be taken, and then to the DEXA machine to measure Phil's fat and muscle content. Hi. 
sorry, but the weight limit on the table is 350, so mm -hmm. you won't fit, the table won't move properly. The weight should be It depresses me when somebody calls me big guy. I'd be known as Phil again instead of walking up behind somebody and scaring the tar out of him because they see this rather large, angry looking man who's not really angry. I'm just in pain. <laughs> Go ahead and stand up straight. Okay, six foot one inch. Weight is 429.6. What do you do for exercise? Anything right now? Walk from the truck to the truck stop. Okay. <laughs> because it's, all this is just too much to carry for me right now. It hurts to walk very far. Yep, yep. How about your feet and ankles? Have you had a lot of problems with swelling? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because it's most of it worse on the left foot. Okay. You're at more risk of getting yeah. skin breakdown where you'll get ulcers and stuff that can get infected, just like diabetes. So. Yeah. You are 429 pounds, which gives you a body mass index, and that's your weight versus your height. And ideally, we like that less than 25. You're at 58, mm -hmm. which is in the extreme obesity or morbid obesity. You know, you're almost off the scales for mm -hmm. a few more pounds, and I wouldn't have been even able to measure you on this type of scale. And what's the prognosis if... Um Phil does nothing about anything and just keeps going the way he's going. What do you think he has the unpleasant things to look forward to? Um, if he doesn't lose weight and keeps going, he'll get diabetes. Um, your blood pressure will continue to rise, which will require numerous medications to keep it under control. With your family history and your high blood pressure, you will be at risk of having a heart attack. If you have a heart attack and your heart dilates from the heart attack and from your blood pressure, you will eventually not be able to breathe and go into heart failure. If the sleep apnea that you probably have from the weight continues, you're at risk of heart failure, which means then you're on pills to get rid of the extra fluid. You limit your ability to walk any further, and then you're at risk of sudden death because of your weight. You could just not wake up one morning. Scary. Mm -hmm. Phil got the all clear from the dock to start a 10-day juice fast. So, it was off to the supermarket to buy some fruit and vegetables. You'll never guess who we bumped into in the car park. So this is your brother, is it? This is my brother, Barry. Barry? Barry? Bear? <laughs> so, mate, what do you think about his, uh, his situ current situation, where he's at now? He needs help. But I think uh, if this works, it'd be good for him. Has he always been like this? No. He used to be a little scrawny kid. So what do you think happened? Well, that's hard to say because I let myself go too. I right. mean, I used to be 200 pounds. Right. And now I'm up around 300. Right. But that's my own fault. Right. I don't exercise like I should. I don't eat right. And that's a lot of Phil's problem. He doesn't exercise or eat right. I just hope this works because yeah. he needs it. Yeah. Now we're going to get some groceries. All right. I just got my, my ice cream milk. Okay. See you, mate. Thank See you. Later, bro. All, All right. the best. Given that Phil had never done anything like this before, we thought it'd be good to get him away from all temptation. Dr. Badberg suggested Phil should do some exercise, starting off with some light walking and swimming. So, we found a great place by the lake. From my point of view, you know, 10 days, a huge achievement and it'll be a huge win. And uh, you're gonna feel, you know, terrific at the end of that. I, I have no doubt you're gonna feel terrific. Breakfast for juice in the morning to start with. Well, I, I used to start with fruit and then just go into vegetables with a touch of fruit sometimes in the rest of the day. Looks good. That looks good, doesn't it? It's good to me. And good luck, mate. That's good. You like that? I like that. How, how much do you feel like walking? I think I could do five minutes out and five minutes back. Okay, it's a 10 minute walk. That'd be a good start, I reckon. Yeah. All right, let's go. Yeah. 
he was depressed. He was on the border of, I think, suicide. He was trying to kill himself with food. When Joe got a hold of him, I, it struck a responsive chord in him, and I think it's great. Now, you know, you can get me on the phone. Yes. Give me a call. Mm -hmm. You know, it's going to be tough, but I know you can do it. I've got it now, I think. this but me. You know, I stand up and I can't see my toes. It's not, I'm not, I'm not happy with it. I can't clean myself well around it. If I go to the restroom, you know, it's, that's quite, I would call it almost a circus act. I guess you'd say it you know, takes creative thinking to get to clean the areas down there. I didn't really start putting on weight until after the Air Force and came home and I started to eat because I wasn't happy and I chose that. And it's been that way ever since, slowly isolating myself. I started getting into truck driving again. My excuse was I was following in dad's footsteps because dad was a truck driver. But, you know, uh, staying in the truck and staying out a long time and isolating, eating nothing but greasy food. That's when it all started. It didn't get real bad until after the second divorce. That's when I really started putting the weight on. And I thought I was a real failure. So I just started eating until I was, couldn't eat no more. in my health and what's been going on with me. I've been a horrible father. I don't want any of my kids to see me like this. I don't. Not even my youngest boy. He's eight years old. And he's at the age where he really needs to see his father. I'm hiding because of all this. And I haven't even given him a chance. I'm going to start getting down to where I start feeling better about myself and being able to do things with my youngest son. You know, the football, the baseball, and the park. Walking with him to see the games and stuff like that. Even just walking around town and talking with him about his day and what he's going on in his young life. I want to be around there for that for one thing, you know. Being what I call a cheeseburger away from a heart attack is not a good thing. And that's what also gets me upset. I'm afraid to do anything with him. He's the one I'm working for. They all, my oldest children all want to see me skinny and handsome again. They've seen pictures. They'd like to see that again. So. But I'd like to lose a decent amount of weight. Even 20, 20 to 30 pounds would make me happy. I was a championship swimmer when I was eight and under. 15 years old. I was winning trophies and medals on the swim team. 
if I wouldn't have quit, I probably would have gone to the Olympics. I've broken a lot of goals, but for my health and for my life, this is a goal I'm going to keep and stick with and work on. Healthy, healthy, healthy is the main, main goal. Phil's eating habits were typical of the average American diet. As a percentage of calories, roughly 60% of what we eat is processed and refined foods. 30% animal products, 5% whole grains and white potatoes, and just 5% are fruits and vegetables, the foods which provide most of our micronutrients. Without those micronutrients, our cells are weakened and susceptible to a whole gang of diseases. But Phil has turned that around. He's taken his fruit and veg intake from 5% up to the maximum 100%. Fruits and vegetables are the delivery system that brings the sun's energy to our cells, giving them the micronutrients they need. The micronutrients not only nourish the cells, they also clean and remove the waste. and help them resist all those diseases. <laughs> and that's why what you eat is so important. But I'll leave the details to the experts. And I, this poster, this um, study was done with Barbara Sauter, a PhD at the University of Southern California, and with Dr. Colin Campbell at Cornell University on people undergoing weight loss who were diabetic or high blood pressure or heart disease. And actually in this study where they followed what we call a vegetable-based diet, the pyramid has vegetables the base, fruits and beans, whole grains, nuts and seeds, and then animal products are in a smaller amount. We're talking about twice weekly or less, generally speaking, and not eating processed foods, that this healthy diet resulted in the most weight loss of any study ever recorded in medical history. The average person lost 53 pounds, and they kept it off. The people didn't gain their weight back. Now, I wouldn't mind if, you know, it wouldn't be so terrible if people were well-educated and well informed they didn't have to die and then they can make that choice they want to commit suicide with food but the unfortunate thing is most americans are not properly informed it's just like they can say you're going to smoke cigarettes you want to smoke go ahead and do it but you're going to have a heart attack you're going to get cancer you can't escape from the biological laws of cause and effect what happens to you is going to be the same thing that happens to every other american and you're going to have a health care crisis we're going to run to doctors looking for medications to control our symptoms our headaches our fatigue our allergies our autoimmune conditions our digestive disturbances we're going to be a medical crippled society because we're eating a diet style that couldn't be better designed by the best nutritional scientists in the world to create the epidemic of disease we have in America. And of course, obesity, diabetes, and all these diseases of nutritional ignorance. When you're on a juice fast, there's always something. Something that makes you want to break. Some obstacle. Something that's there that makes it oh so tough. For Phil, it was a barbecue on the 4th of July. What I normally do is I normally stuff my face, brother. Potato salad, hot dogs, hamburgers, steaks, soda pop, milk. And now I gotta watch that. And drink this. <laughs> Nice to meet you, Phil. Nice to meet you. Johnny and I'm Ray. Nice to meet you. And so what, what did you make here, Phil? It's fruits and vegetables. Wow. It's good. It's not bad. Yeah. I, I, I could do it. Uh -huh. You drink that big glass? This is my meal, every meal. Do you feel full when you're done with that? that yeah, I do, actually. And you've been on five days? I've been on five days and I've already lost 15, uh, no, 17 pounds, almost 20 pounds. And I drink water. Okay, but, but you also you inspire me. It's not just for people my size. I mean, no. It's for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm going to go for it. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun. 
I was yeah. excited. My first con my first conversion. So yeah, it was really it was really wonderful. I'm just a simple 42 year old truck driver from Iowa. You know, I'm not the head of NASA, the head of a corporation. You know. I'm not the village idiot either, thank God to that, but we're taught to eat the Bible in the New Testament. You know, Jesus fasted for 40 days. John the Baptist fasted. The apostles fasted with Jesus. And it's not just Christians that fast. Most religious people, including Muslims, Jews, Hindus and Buddhists, they all fast. I reckon they're onto something. Doing good, Brian. Down 30 pounds. 30 pounds? Fantastic. What day are we on, Phil? This will be day 9, day 10. I'm losing track. What's been the toughest thing about the last 10 days for you? July 4th weekend. And it all got to my uh, food addiction. The hamburgers or hot dogs, you know, the old me. I was talking to a guy by his grill, and I'm not going to lie to you. And, uh, I, a thought flashed through my head. To actually, while I was talking to him, reach behind him, pick up a hot dog straight off the grill and grab it and eat it. That thought they actually raced through my mind. But what stopped you from doing it? Common sense. I, I'm doing this to make my life healthier. So I'd like to go 30 days for now. But I want to make sure that you feel that going on is, you know, of your own volition and that you're not going to feel like you have to do it for anyone else. Are you sure you want to do it for yourself? I want to, I, I want to do it for myself. I've already figured it out. In the 10 days that we've done this, I've dropped two bowling balls. Nothing would make me happier than you beating me, my friend. <laughs> I tell you what. It's probably not the easiest thing to do, but it's well worth it. I mean, just by looking at him, you know it's worth it. My mom has tried so many different things, and she's, you know, every diet pill that's on the Walmart shelf or, you know, wherever she finds it on TV, whatever. I mean, she spent thousands of dollars, and this is one thing she hasn't tried. And if it works this well for him, I mean, why wouldn't it work for, for everyone else? And it's all natural, and that's probably the best thing. I think this would be perfect if I could just get her to try it now. <laughs> Damn, I hate that ball. <laughs> Hello. Well, hello. Wow. Look at you. Hello. <laughs> Your valves all look good. Your heart's squeezing better than it was last time. It appears that whatever you're doing is working. Hello. Hello. How are we doing? Uh, I feel good. And evidently, on the other two tests, I'm doing good. So. You are doing well. You went from 429. To 368, so that's a 60 pound weight loss in a month. That's mm -hmm. excellent. Your blood pressure went down from 160 over 84, which would be high blood pressure, down to 136 over 70, which is a perfectly normal blood pressure. Cool. And your triglycerides, which is your fats in your body, were at 216. Today, your total triglycerides are down to 161, which is almost in the normal range. <laughs> My medication? Mm -hmm. uh, do you think eventually, if I keep continuing this, and maybe, you know, I'm sure we're going to need tests and stuff, but maybe that sometime you can take it off or lower it or stuff like that if we, I need it? We would definitely probably be able to lower it, if not get rid of it completely, okay. as things improve. Okay. And how is your urticaria doing? I haven't really had an outbreak in about over a week now. Good. And usually I have most something, you know, a small spot here and there. Okay. So I've, I've kind of wanted to continue this fast. Do uh -huh. you think it'd be all right if I could continue? Yes. Everything looks very good on you. I mean, there's no signs that it is causing you any adverse effects. If anything, you're much healthier than you were a, a month ago. Oh, cool. Well, isn't that just unbelievable? Mm-hmm. It's wonderful. I'm very, I'm very happy and excited.
I mean, it's nothing short of a miracle. Oh, that's pretty much right. I mean, it's... Well, these little victories are making me happy, so... Oh, man, that's congratulations, Phil. Well done, mate. And I brought some juice with me. You brought some juice? Would you like to try some of my juice that I've been drinking? Sure. So Mostly well. green vegetables, as mm -hmm. you can tell. That's why we call it mean green. Give you a little shot there. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> it's a little ironic, isn't it? <laughs> Phil's not the only one with good news. Six months after I finish my fast, I'm 90 pounds lighter. No pain in the chest? No. Good. 70% yeah. of the diseases that affect us now are caused by our life choices. How we exercise, if we smoke, what we eat, that's saturated fats, carbohydrate, salt and alcohol. Now, can you have some of that? Sure. Most people have too much of it. Who would have thought I'd get excited about a broccoli salad? We certainly changed his lifestyle. We didn't just change what went in his mouth. He became more active. He stops drinking alcohol, he doesn't drink tea and coffee, and he doesn't buy manufactured, processed foods. What he's done will go a long way to prevent him from getting heart disease, cancer, mental illness, uh, diabetes, um, and a range of other medical conditions because he's committed himself to a healthy lifestyle. And he did it at 40. That's you. I know, it sheds some, haven't I? I mean, to be fair to Joe, he's probably a bit of an inspiration to us. You'd yeah, to say that. I'd say that's true. I'd hate to admit that. Yeah, don't tell him. No, no, please don't. Please don't tell him. Do not tell no, him. we don't need to feed that machine. Don't feed it. We definitely think we should do it. <laughs> he got me to try and do it, and I did it for three days, and I rang him and I said, mate, I'd had headaches, I was crook. I, you know, I couldn't sleep, I couldn't concentrate at work, I couldn't, there's a lot of... I said, I don't know how you do it, but I can't do this anymore. I need a meat pie. Are you ready for this? Well, hang on to your pineapples, because Phil fasted for another 30 days. That's right, a total of 60 days on nothing but fresh fruit and vegetable juice. As the weeks passed, he had more and more energy and his face began to glow. And in this community, he has inspired so many people. He felt so good, he wanted to spread the word. So, he started a community juice fast. Here's how it worked. The store got a hold of 10 juice machines, which they would lend out to those willing to give it a go. What did they have to do? Six days on nothing but juice, as long as they consulted their family doctor. I think it's good. <laughs> the response was off the charts. Thanks, Jan. And people were already signing up for the next one. Well, the first one, like I say, the first day I wondered why I did it, because, you know, I want to eat, but and the third night, when I got home from a 14 hour day, where I usually would have went to bed, I went outside and I worked for an hour and a half, come in and got on the computer for an hour and then watched TV for an hour and finally went to bed at 10.30 and had to get up at 4, so I know I had a lot more energy. At day four, I felt amazing. I sleep really well. I lost eight pounds. I'm down 15 pounds. I got on scale this morning and I've lost 22 pounds, so I'm tickled. Today I just weighed myself and I'm down 91 pounds, which is six bowling balls, ladies and gentlemen. So that's, that is what I used to carry 57 days ago, all over my body. That's number one step, so. <laughs> Good morning, how are you doing today? Uh, I'm doing wonderful. Good. And uh, how about the decrease in the methotrexate? How did that go? That's going wonderful. I was wondering if I can get them dropped some more sometime. Yep, you know. they could probably drop some some more. You've been five weeks without any flares, huh? Without any flares, not even so much as pain and, you know, or an itch. Once we got you off the methotrexate, then we can get you off the hydroxychloroquine. Okay. Uh, eventually, we'll have you off of all of them. Okay. 
-hmm. When are you going to go back to work and do all? Oh, I tend to go, well, hopefully I can get, I'm not going back to driving truck. That darn, that darn near killed me. Mm -hmm. But I got a couple, few applications up the lake for, you know, act, active jobs, you know, physically moving around. So what's your family think? Oh, they're all, they're all proud of me. They're all happy. My brother's a little jealous because I'm catching up to him. He's going up. I'm going to... <laughs> you know what I like? I like spam. You know I shouldn't like spam, but I do. Oh. <laughs> it's nothing but ham with... I eat spam. <laughs> I love spam, too. I used to have it in the truck. Oh, yeah. I mean, probably on the weekends I could juice a little, and I planned on doing some walking and a little exercise here and there. With me, it's the social job family limitations. Yeah. You know, if I did it, then, well, you know, yeah. I'd be tempted by what they have over here. Yeah. And then well, yeah. I'd probably fall off the wagon. Well, you don't have to do it as long as I have. I mean, you can do it so you can detox and rebalance your body, like, for a week. Oh, well, I don't yeah. know. It'd take a longer week to detox this truck. That's what I get that question a lot. How, do I have to do it as long as you? No. Yeah. <laughs> You can do it for 10 days. I mean, I, I'd recommend at least a week because, you know, the first few days you're going to feel kind of bleh. Yeah. You know, you're going to feel kind of nauseous because you're detoxing. And, and then after a while, you get energetic and everything, and then, you know, give it a while. Or... Yeah, that's, that's my problem. I'd be trying to put a steak in the juicer. <laughs> that would make a mess. And it should be a very good proving point to a lot of people that you can make very radical lifestyle changes without having to have surgery or a medicine or a quick fix. This is going to be longer lasting because you've completely changed how you eat and everything about the way you live your life. When I, when I go off this, I already got my mind made up. I want to just eat soup and salad for a while. So I have no, no desire to eat any of that fast food right now. It's, it's gone. I mean, this is something I've always wanted to do uh, is to help people uh, in some way or another. And, Knowing that I helped Eugene out, it made my life so much better. Oh, hi, come on in. Hey, Bear. Come on in the kitchen. I'm gonna go in sit out, if you don't mind. What happened? Well, I went up to Sioux Falls, I had my knee scoped. Mm -hmm. It was right about two hours after we got home. I had this, I had this pain. Right across my chest, and oh, I was hurting. I thought it was gas, you know, I don't know. And then it just kind of creeped up into my jaw. It's like I had locked jaw. I just, oh, it hurt so bad. Mm -hmm. And then I got lightheaded, got short of breath, and the hot sweats just came through. Yeah. And I was, I was leaning on my dresser going, oh, whatever this is, make it stop. Mm -hmm. this, this is not right. I told Claudia, I said, you better take me to the hospital because something's wrong. Right. And they hauled me up to the hospital, laid me on the table, stripped me, wired me up. They said I was having a heart attack. Scared the tar out of me. Scared the tar out of me, too. <laughs> so, you know, you remember, I don't want to lose my big brother, you know. Um, so what kind of medication did they put you on? So what do you have in there? I have a little bit of everything. <laughs> I have some aspirin. Okay. That's a blood thinner. Metformin. That's for my type 2 diabetes. That's Mavic. That's for my heart. Lipitor. I think that's that cholesterol pill. I'm not sure. Okay. I have a couple others. Okay. Well, so I'll see them all. The heart attack kind of opened my eyes. Mm -hmm. The way I was living was not right mm -hmm. and i'd like to get off these pills yeah because a lot of pills like that that's not right i'll end up growing a third eye or something all right so what are we starting with okay but it's usually best to start with the kale all right because then the rest of the vegetables wash it in and mix it up grab that down below so you can go out and then just shove it down i got it go ahead like that? Yep. I think we can live with this for a while. Yeah. The, all, the no. full bore. I no, mean, no, I'm not bad. asking you to go full bore because that, you know, in your condition right now, it's yeah. not recommended. I mean, use it as a supplement to your diet. Yeah. You know, something like you wake up in the morning and you grab a glass of juice, mean green, and then you, you go on about your day. You know, I've always looked up to my brother. 
he knows this is serious. He knows it's helped me. He, so he's he's starting to listen now. He's you know, he's he's starting to realize that he, he doesn't he can't be real real selfish. He's got to think of Quadi and Vanessa and his son Barry and the rest of us. Little brother leads the way, kind of a thing. When I started this journey, I thought it was all about the juice fast. But as I now know, that was only the beginning. For the most part, it's been about maintaining a balanced lifestyle. One thing I know for sure is that if I go back to my old ways, I'll end up back where I started in no time. So, the choice is mine. Before all this, yeah, I was probably like the rest of the American people out here who had bad eating habits. But yeah, I'm taking full responsibility for my life. It was my life. I almost ruined it, and I need to repair it. That fell at 430 pounds was real dark and just didn't care. Um, well, he's died. That fell has gone. Now I'm feeling much better. I'm getting clear, I'm starting to realize a lot of things and, you know, working my way through them. The food is, you know, in itself, too, is also making me feel better. You know, I feel so much better than I did at the end of June. So we're down here on Manly Beach. Just to come here as a little kid, dad and my brother, park the car up here, roll out down, straight into the surf. Get bashed by a few waves. It's terrific. And afterwards, Head up to an ice cream shop just up here. And I'd have a double chocolate ice cream cone. And all was good in the world. Boy, those are the days. We fast forward 35 years, and I've been on a journey. An expanding one, and right now, contracting one. <laughs> I'm very proud. He did an excellent job. He's lost the weight. I hope he continues. Ready, set, go. Once the weight started coming off and he started to see that he was doing this, his demeanor changed, his attitude changed. <laughs> and the lower he got, I think the better he felt. <laughs> 
you're getting better. <laughs> as far as me doing it? No. <laughs> so I heard you spent the weekend at Grandpa's Lake. I bring my baby gun. Cool. I feel great since the fast. I don't have the migraines anymore, so that is a big, huge plus. Even if I'm not fasting, I still have to have the juicing because of the nutrients that are in it. It's just a normal part of my everyday life now. I feel like I'm 21 years old again. All right, let's show you how to do this wee thing. Show me this wee fit. Oh, yeah. See if you can keep up with the old fat guy. <laughs> Swivel, swivel. Keep swiveling. Put some action in it. Come on. I'm gonna work it on it. Oh, you want to see ski jump? Ski jump, cool. Dad loves playing golf. And finally, after eight years, Joe and Dad are back on the golf course playing together. And I think that's fantastic. Oh, yes. Good shot. Right in the middle. Oh, yeah, beauty, mate. Good shot, eh? Thanks, Dad. Good on you, mate. Good. That's good. Skull of Lahaim and all that stuff. Uh, for your health. He's got me to see the, the changes in him can help change me. So we're going to try to change me. That was a pretty good batch. Mm -hmm. Better than this morning. I wonder what I did different. <laughs> no, no. I peeled the lemon. <laughs> there you go. That's what it was. I'm proud that he's gotten this far, and hopefully he'll be proud of me. I've gone from someone who knew to someone who would do. And uh, that's just helped my journey, my journey along. And I'm hoping that I'm going to stick around here a bit longer. And as for my journey, well, it ain't over yet. Got a long way to go. I hope. Get high, take in the sunlight. 